another edition of the Coach Godwin Show. I'm your host, Coach Karan Godwin, all-time leading scorer at the University of North Florida. Also author of that great new book, Everyone Hates a Ball Hog, But They All Love a Score. Of course, available at jumpstarthoops.com. Uh, please log on to the site to sign up uh, for the newsletter so I can keep you posted on what's going on. Also, subscribe to this podcast. If you have any questions for me, please email me at coachgodwin at jumpstart33.com. That's Coach Godwin at jumpstart33.com. Uh, today we have an interesting podcast. Uh, I've been getting a, I've been getting a lot of uh, emails concerning what it takes to play at the Division One level, and also what these college coaches are looking for. So this would be great um, insight for you, high school kids, at the juniors and and seniors that, that want to know what these coaches are looking for, so you know how to prepare yourself. I just went to a coaching clinic uh, that was very very good. Had some great coaches, Jim Behan. Um, Stan Heath from uh, South Florida, uh, Jay Wright, some some very excellent speakers. And uh, one of the coaches that uh, stood out was uh, Dino Gaudio from Wake Forest. And one of the reasons he stood out is he actually mapped out what he was looking for and what he told his uh, assistant coaches to look for when he's out there recruiting and looking for talent. And uh, one of the things he said, the first thing he said was, um, can he do the work? So um, when you're out there playing, just realize that the, there has to be a balance between basketball and books. All right, you have to have the mentality that you're going to work hard in the classroom, just like you work hard on the court. I know coming up, a lot of guys that I knew uh, weren't focused on the book aspect, and it, it came back to bite them, especially with the clearinghouse and um, all the regulations and stipulations that you have to go through to be able to compete at the Division One level or Division Two or Division Three, whatever level it is that, that um, you're going to compete on. So doing the work is very, very important. So make sure you're keeping those grades up. So that's the first thing he's looking for. Uh, but above anything, the guy can jump, he can run, he can shoot, he can do all those things. But can he do the work? Uh, number two, he said, he asked himself, would I like to play with that guy? So so right now, he's looking at your game. He's saying, okay, you know, going back to when I played basketball, is this the type of teammate that I would like to have? You know, because he knows um, whenever you're talking about a Division One program or any program, you want good team chemistry. Uh, you want guys that come in your program that, that can make an impact right away, but they're going to be good in the locker room. As you've seen many, many times and many uh, teams where can that cancer in the locker room can just come back to haunt you. So he wants guys that are good teammates. So he says, would I like to play with that guy? Um, what type of teammate is he? So these are some of the things that he's looking for. Uh, another thing. Would I like to coach him? So this is very, very important because as a coach, uh, you look at a player, and the last thing you want is a head case on your team. You know, you go out there, you, you're going to these AAU tournaments. Um, and now you have even less time because of the, the NCAA rules have changed a little bit to evaluate talent. So so now you, you want to look at a player and say, okay, is he a coachable kid? And what does it mean to be coachable? Um, I was talking to another coach that's actually, actually at George Washington, Coach Ellerby, and, and he wanted to see if, if kids were able to, to look at the coach in the eye, you know, take instruction, and then be able to go ahead and execute. You know, that's very, very important. You know, nowadays you got kids that uh, they, they think they're good, uh, they, they think they're better than other players. They don't want to necessarily listen to their coach. So no, no matter what type of coach you have and, and, and what type of insight he's giving you, you got to realize that there are other coaches that are coming to see how you're taking this instruction and, and how you're applying it toward the game. Are you looking your coach in the eye? You know, um, um, are, are you going out there and are you yelling at your teammates? Are, are, are you a coachable player is what they want to know. And also, and, and this was some great insight, he said he looks at how you come out of the game. And this is very important because, you know, a lot of kids don't like to come out of the game, especially when, you, when you're talking about – you know, five-star, four-star players or players that, that are the best players on the team. And obviously we're talking about Dino Gaudio, head coach of Wake Forest. He's looking at some some pretty stellar players. So he's looking at how you come out of the game. Uh, do you sulk? Uh, do you run off the floor? Uh, do, you know, do, and your coach, uh, you know, sticks out his hand and shake your hand. Do you just pass him by and brush him off because you're mad because he just took you out the game? You know, how, how do you react to getting two fouls early? You know? Um, you know, what, do you go and, and sit at the end of the pinch or do you go and sit next to the assistant that's usually right there ready to give you instruction? So, so these are some of the keys and, um, and things that, that Coach Gaudio looks for 
when he's when he's looking for a player. And um, you know he's had some good ones over the years. The other thing that he said that was very insightful is, would I want that guy in my family? And, and this is one of those character things. Um, when you talk about wanting a, a guy in your family and, um, and you being proud of someone, uh, it's all about their character and the type of person they are. Like I said before, when you have head cases and you have kids that don't have good character, it can spread like cancer in the locker room. Also, um, you know, coming into a into manhood and him knowing that you're going to be staying at the dorms and you may even have your own apartment off campus, he has to trust that he's not going to get that call one o'clock in the morning and that you're doing things that are detrimental to the team and det- detrimental to the image of the university. So would I want that guy in my family? So you got to understand that a lot of these college coaches, especially when, when they're scouting kids, you know, they may arrive early just to watch and see how you interact with your teammates. They, they want to know what type of people you're hanging around. Um, other times, they, they may have a, a friend in the area that you don't even know. They may ask their friend, hey, go and check out this kid. You know, every time I know, every time I go to these games, these kids know who I am, you know, so they're on their best behavior. But I'm going to send one of my friends that you don't even know. He's in playing clothes. He's gonna, just going to come to the game. He's going to watch how you interact. So let's recap. Dino Gaudio, head coach, Wake Forest. Number one, can he do the work? Can he balance basketball and books? Number two, would I like to play with this guy? You know, what type of teammate are you? Number three, would I like to coach him? Are you a coachable kid? How do you come out the game? Do you sulk? You know, are are you a whiner? Are you the type of guy that gets mad at every teammate that makes a mistake? You know, are you a coachable kid? Can you look a coach in the eye, take instruction, and go out there and execute? Uh, And number four, would I want this guy in my family? What type of character traits is he, does he have? Is he generally a good guy or is, or is he a guy that's potentially going to cause problems for me in my program? All right. So these are some of the things that I talked about in my book. Everyone hates a ball hog, but they all have a score. Doing very, very well. I'm, I'm receiving a tremendous response. Um, the book is predicated on balancing your life on and off the court. It also has some great gems and scoring the ball because, because that's what I did best is uh put up points but uh, i encourage you go and buy that also uh subscribe to this podcast log on to jumpstarhoops.com uh, send me your email i have a little newsletter and information that i want to get to you that's uh, vital to your progress as a basketball player uh, till next time work hard study harder